Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercies are everlasting and his truth endureth for generation to generation. So we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For our Lord, he is good. His mercies are everlasting and his truth endureth for generation to generation and also to our generation right now right his mercy his truth his grace we are celebrating and worshiping our lord and savior jesus christ who has provided a way for us back to the father well on this december 29 we will be finishing up the book of Zechariah. How about that? <clears throat> we are up to chapter 14, if you would like to turn to that in your Bible. Zechariah, <clears throat> chapter 14, and let me grab a sip here. While it's nice and hot, and this is quite a severe warning and history that the Lord is giving out to Zechariah <coughs> to end his book with. And so we need to really take it in and, and compare. Do we see these things today? And I think you're going to be amazed at how much we do see. <coughs> Zechariah chapter 14. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will, de be de will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. Doesn't sound good, does it? Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And then the Lord shall go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two. And I have had the extreme privilege of standing there on that Mount of Olives, contemplating these scriptures and trying to envision that. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south and then you shall flee through my mountain valley for the mountain valley shall reach to Ezel yes you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you oh my goodness can you imagine what kind of a number that would be? <clears throat> all the saints from all the generations with you. It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time it shall happen 
that it will be light. In the evening, and in that day, it shall be that living waters shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them toward the western sea, and half of them toward, or I mean the eastern, excuse me, half of them toward the eastern sea, and half of them toward the western sea, in both summer and winter, it shall occur. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day it shall be said, and here's a quote, and this is part of what they call the Shema, the Lord is one, and his name one. All the land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate and from the tower of Hanuel to the king's wine presses. The people shall dwell in it and no longer <clears throat> shall there be utter destruction. Wow, that's a good word. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh, and listen to this, this is just, this is almost horrible to have to say. <clears throat> Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. Wow. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel and the donkey, and on all the cattle, that will be in those camps, so shall this plague be. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of lords, of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. How about that? And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And in that day, holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells of the horses, the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. In that day there shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> How about that? And that concludes Zechariah. We move right along now to Revelation 
chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, and the, the beginning sentence here uh, means so much to me because the church that I attend, St. Michael's Anglican in downtown Charleston, the main beautiful stained glass window over the altar is a picture of this sentence. Revelation 20, verse 1. And then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, both names, and bound him for a thousand years, and he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead <clears throat> did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. It doesn't even say just the beach. That's more sand than we know what to count. But the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. <clears throat> the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God and books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Got that? There are books being written about you and me. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. And then death and Hades were cast 
into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whew. That, I pray, you will read all over again for yourself also. <clears throat> we continue on here with Psalm 148. 148, and I hope that you will try to picture this psalm because the description is just amazing. <clears throat> Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heaven, heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He also established them forever and ever, and made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, and he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. Wow, that has some encouragement in it, doesn't it? And we wrap up today's reading with Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9. Proverbs chapter 31, 8 and 9. <clears throat> Be sure and go to Kathy's graphics. Oh, they are just wonderful, wonderful. Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. All of those people that you know need jobs. Maybe they need medical help. The elderly need help, and they need people to come visit, check on them. The loving, the wise, a lot of people need help with babysitting. There's all kinds of wonderful helps that we could say, now this year, this is what I'm going to do to build up the kingdom of God. And I also, when I read a line that says, in the cause of all who are appointed to die. I can't help but think of the ladies who are deceived into abortion. To actually kill their own children in such a way. And if any of you have had one and you still suffer any kind of guilt or 
remembrance that's hard to live with, please know that forgiveness is there for you. God has forgiveness for you. You can bring that very hard issue or any other hard issue unto the Lord and just spill it out to him. Just spill out how your heart feels, how your emotions and your mind feel. And he will meet you at that point. And he desires to bring you peace, forgiveness, encouragement to greet a new day with new purposes, new dreams, to let all of the past just be forgiven and be behind you and look forward to a new day. I encourage you, seek him. He loves you so very much and he desires for you to come and just confess the things that trouble you for he already knows but he needs you to bring that kind of repentance from your own heart unto him. That his forgiveness will truly have an effect. You will know it. You will feel it. Please bring every issue of sin, every issue of the past that hurt you, brought you pain, troubles your mind, even keeps you up at night, keeps you awake instead of good sleep. He desires sleep for his beloved children. So I pray that the word of God will be a blessing to each and every one of you today to go over as we approach a new year and as we approach a time when there is war in Israel. <clears throat> there are enemies trying to do terrible things. Draw unto God's people. Get yourself into a good Bible-believing church and meet some new people, meet some friends. It will be a blessing. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for a brand new day. We give you praise, Lord, that we still very lovingly and thankfully have your word in our hands to be able to read, <clears throat> to be able to lift up, to come to you. Precious Lord, help us to do just that. Help us, Lord, to be good givers also, giving out to people who need help, who need encouragement, giving unto organizations or ministries that we know are solid, and are honest. Lord, all of us need to do something to help Israel, your very own people. Those are the people we are reading about on a daily basis, your chosen ones, the Jews. Help us, Lord, to find it in our hearts to give out. There are so many needs over there right now. Oh, look it up. Bring in some of the news stations that cover the truth of Israel. Um, I'd like to suggest I, I'm fortunate enough on my television programming to receive one called JBS, Jewish Broadcasting Service. Jewish Broadcasting Service. And it is a station raised up by the Jewish people. And they are giving a continuing uh, report all the time of what's happening. Father God, <clears throat> I'd ask that you would bless them as their hearts hurt to have to tell what's going on. Precious Lord, Keep your anointing upon Bibi Netanyahu and all of the Knesset people. Cause them to come together in unity <clears throat> and to seek your will that they might know what to do. 
I'd ask, Lord, that you would raise up righteous leadership in America and in all the countries of the world, that it could be a time of a great revival unto you, Lord, bringing souls into your kingdom. While there is a measure of peace, while we have time, while we ourselves are still alive, let us tend to God's people. And all of God's people went ahead with your reading, your day, praising and worshiping him in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, the Lord, the soon coming King. Have a great day. Bye-bye.